This week, a look at the oldest energy source around, the sun, and how companies are harnessing its power, providing clean, renewable electricity, and creating jobs. Before we explain what's happening here at home, let's look at a country facing very similar energy challenges to the U.S. Israel, it is completely dependent on foreign oil. And its biggest supplier of natural gas, Egypt, is hardly reliable right now after recent attacks on the Egyptian stretch of gas pipeline that feeds Israel. And Israel is eager to draw more heavily on renewable energy. So the country is turning to a natural resource it has in abundance, sunshine. This is a NASA map from space tracking the sunniest spots on the Earth. The darker the red, the better for collecting and using solar energy. The United States has a deep red band across the southwest, and the whole of Israel is on the northern tier of the Earth's sunniest stretch. As the CEO of an Israeli solar company said, the sun cannot be sabotaged. And while Israel still needs help from the rest of the world to claim its energy independence, solar technology it's developing right now could soon be generating power here in the U.S. More now in our continuing look at the Israel Connection. Israel's Negev Desert, once home to Abraham, the Ottomans, and a stretch of the Spice Road. Arid, unforgiving, and brutally bright. But that's not to say there's nothing new under the sun. Alongside a highway in the southern Negev sits the Arava Institute. Housed on a working kibbutz, it's a hothouse for solar energy innovation, innovation that could make its way to the United States. Among the technologies in the testing phase here, a solar panel field that sits on the water, designed to power coastal areas that don't have a lot of empty land. And this, a small solar array designed to better collect the sun's energy. Each row of flat mirrors concentrates a primary primary concentration on one of those optical heads. Here. Yeah. yeah. Ayal Richter is the brains behind Verilite, a solar energy system that he says is especially efficient. One of Richter's brighter ideas was coming to the Arava Institute to put his product through its paces. Why test this on a kibbutz? Why here? Well, here they have a very comfortable setting for new technologies. This is a validation center run by Capital Nature. It's a bit of a, a lab. Yeah. High-tech right, lab. Right. It's mm -hmm. a high-tech lab for, for new, for new uh, renewable uh, technologies. A lab that focuses on the most ancient form of energy, the sun a natural resource Israel has in abundance. Everybody has been using the energy of the sun since uh, Neanderthals, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I think it's a very uh, uh, natural, natural uh, connection. They're palm trees, they need the sun to grow. We grow energy. It's funny, when, you, when you're in Israel and you start talking about solar energy, it's amazing how many people can quote the Bible and give you references to the ability of the sun and the respect of the any people, the Muslims, the Jews, the Christians, about the sun and with the power of the sun. American so, David Rosenblatt is helping Israel realize its clean energy potential. His company, Arava Power, built a solar panel field in the Negev. Israel has the best sun, has people living where that is, has transmission lines, and has available land. You make it sound like a simple equation. Yeah, what well, could be hard? <laughs> Israel does have a long history of solar power. Almost 90% of its homes have rooftop solar water heaters. But solar energy generates only about 1% of Israel's electricity. So it has to rely on imported fossil fuels for power. If you look at the Arab states, they actually have a, a grid that they share among each other. Mm -hmm. So if a country doesn't produce enough power, they can get power from another country. Israel has no backup. Right. So like the United States, if New Jersey doesn't create enough power, then it goes with some of its neighbors and more power is provided to New Jersey. So that doesn't have to produce all of its power. In Israel, if it doesn't produce power, it goes black. With that in mind, Israel's government just approved a plan to get 10% of the country's electricity from renewable sources by 2020. That's about the same total the U.S. gets today from renewables like solar and wind and hydropower and biomass. But in some ways, the U.S. is following Israel's lead in solar energy. A trip to the northern reaches of the Negev is a little like looking in the mirror, a preview of what's to come in the U.S. But the view is much better, way up there, almost 200 feet off the ground. The desert has a certain beauty to it, but I bet you've never seen anything quite like this. A little surprise for you. An entire field of concentrated solar panels, all pointing pretty much right at us. 
This solar thermal demonstration facility and all the 1,600 mirrors you see laid out before us, they belong to Bright Source Energy, an American company with deep ties to Israel. A company now building a much bigger version of this power plant in California's Mojave Desert, the biggest solar project under construction in the entire world, with the financial backing of Google, among others. Arnold Goldman is the founder of Bright Source. We, we can only effectively work with his good, direct sunlight, excellent, I'd say, direct sunlight. So we have limited areas, but we work very, very effectively from those areas. The Mojave isn't as sun-drenched as the Negev, but California does have more of another critical resource, land. Israel's only a little bit bigger than the state of New Jersey, and that lack of space could mean a conflict between energy security and national security. Yossi Inbar led Israel's environmental ministry for two years. And some of this land, uh, unfortunately, because we are uh, in a war zone, I would say, we, we need mm -hmm. to keep it for practicing. The Air Force needs to practice. Mm -hmm. And let's say solar panels and bombs don't come together. <laughs> but solar panels could be valuable weapons in a different battle, the fight against climate change. Do you think of climate change as a security threat? The climate change is a security threat. If, if, for example, the delta of the Nile is now a, a, a big agriculture and feeding ground for the Egyptians, as an example, and if wa seawater will rise and there will be no, no, uh, no land, no agriculture, no food, it starts to be our problem at the end of the day. A geopolitical problem that David Rosenblatt says could mean an opportunity for clean energy cooperation. So if you look over there, those trees, mm -hmm. all the date trees off mm -hmm. in the distance, yeah. So right beyond that, and I'm talking, we could walk for five minutes and be there, mm -hmm. is Jordan. We could literally hop across the border if we were allowed. Mm -hmm. That's Jordan. Why not, why couldn't you just put panels there and run a wire? And share the electricity? Share the electricity. And share an ancient reverence for the power of the sun. Arava Power's solar project in the Negev Desert is scheduled to go online later this month, and when it does, the Keturah power plant will become the first ever large-scale solar field to generate power and deliver that power to Israel's electric grid.